This is the fourth section in the solo adventure for Dragonbane, Alone in Deep Fall Breach. Let's go! All right, where were we? Ah, uh, yes, our adventurers were getting cool stuff, those uh, calling stones, if, if you will. Um, and there was a sweet little arcane library. They picked up some neat stuff. That brings us to the fourth section, the soul tree. This is actually pretty cool. So for this one, they actually went through seven sections, the streaming stairs, the floating chamber, two randoms, maze of lost souls, the wailing shore, and Acheron Isle is how I'm gonna choose to say that for at least right now. My name is Sacred with the Sacred Art of Gaming where we like to talk about all things tabletop role playing. And in this case, we're talking about some solo gaming, a little bit of a recap for what happened in the Dragon Bane adventure. So a couple things to note. Um, so they need to go and they need to get this enchanted sap from the soul tree, not ominous at all. They did happen to pick up a new ally using their their resources but more importantly um they gave them some of the scrolls and stuff that they found in that magical library that they were in they picked up rothaniel hookhat moving forward although that's a cool name i'll probably be referring to him as roth so we start off with the streaming stairs and this is basically like a, a set of stairs where they start on their journey and golfer stone gaze lets them know, yep, all right, this is roughly where you need to go. I kind of have an idea, but I don't know fully. And when they get there, it's just sloshy, muddy, slippery. It's, it's a real problem. All of them kind of get knocked around as they're going down. Anvil, the dog, uh, he, he takes some bumps and then Roth, the, the new mage that they have, he kind of floats down to kind of just... <laughs> He's letting you know right out, right out the gate, like, hey, I'm not about that life. I'm more of a, you know, in the library type dude, but if we're gonna get knowledge, yeah, let's, let's get some knowledge, but I'm not trying to get dirty. From there, they went into the flooding chamber. So just, it's gonna be unavoidable for Roth and Yule Hookat. Water thrashes them around, and then this is where, like, tentacles start to grab them. They, there's basically a trap door in this chamber that they go into, and it's taken them a while to find it as the chamber's filling up. They do find it eventually, but of course, once they find it, and this was based on the rolls that they made, how long it took them, tentacles are then grabbing them. So Karathu, our big, glorious orc gladiator, you know, he's slicing tentacles left and right. The mage, he gets grabbed as well, and as the orc gladiator tries to free him, he ends up dropping the long sword that he tries to cut the tentacle with as, you know, he's fighting off other tentacles. Roth, he's able to do like a mind slice or a mind strike, I believe it is. Cuts the tentacle, they go to, to safety as they escape that area. Then that brings us to our first random, randomly rolled area, the lofty bridge of dripping water. I'm noticing a theme. And this was pretty neat. It's a large bridge over a chasm and there's waterfalls on both sides. They go across thinking, you know, all right, let's just get across. And then when they get halfway there, there's an invisible barrier and they all just kind of look back at the new maids that they're they're paying for, they're paying good money for this guy. And they'll say, hey, figure it out. So he's kind of reaching around and trying to figure out like, you know, what is it that we need to do after some time and some rolls? He's able to reach around, find an opening to the other side of this invisible uh, doorway essentially and find a switch. He hits the switch and they were, they are now able to pass. And that was based off of a random roll of infiltrate knowledge blocked. Then that brings us to our second random, natural cave of arcane trickery. Avenge forgotten person is what we got here and ended up being a slain ghostly king by the name of Hatheris. Yeah, we'll say Hatheris. And he's the last living, well, last king that was alive before all of his people were slain, this forgotten oasis. The Raven Sisters cursed him and all of his family members. The Raven Sisters are these harpies that they're going to the Acheron Isles to hopefully avoid, and that's, they kind of guard the soul tree, which they need to take the enchanted sap from. He does mention to them, he does mention to the party that they're not going to be able to get to Acheron Isle without being able to deal with his people, unfortunately. And he lets them know that there are some crystals in the area. They would need a blacksmith. I feel like that comes up a lot in, in this solo. Yes, of course. Not only do they have one, they have two blacksmiths between Gorham and Sten. So, lets them know they gotta get the crystals 
use that use the materials from these crystals, imbue the weapons, and then they can banish the ghosts. So of course, as they're doing this, the ghosts are showing up, attacking them. They've got to kind of work together so that this way the, the weapons can, can get imbued in a timely manner and they can banish these ghosts w without getting hurt further. They're not entirely sure what's going on here because once, once they do break all of them, the king has like a necklace that kind of glows. He disappears when that happens and but it does work against the ghost so that's that's a positive because that is the threat for this is the the, the ghost that appearing and this is when the threat just happened to hit as they were actually looking for these crystals they were of course in hard to find areas hard to reach areas but with some you know athletics rolls and stuff and then some blacksmithing they got the job done a lot of mazes maze of lost souls <laughs> Sten's like a, he's gonna become a maze smee for sure. A, a maze subject matter expert, if you will. So he actually starts by using his knowledge and expertise of mazes, and this isn't even the last maze, uh, to help him. So that's like his, his like myths and legends role. And that gets the most of the way. Roth is able to find some, some infernal writing and him deciphering that gets them the other half of the way. They did have to fight some skeletons while they were there, but for the most part, they're becoming experts at mazes. Things falling apart, mazes, cultists, definitely a theme. There might be another theme, but those are definitely themes. So that brings us to the Wailing Shore, where the ferryman tells them of a mummification ritual required to get to the isle. So they get to the Wailing Shore. Of course, there's another stone that is needed and there it's surrounded by all these swarms of bats. They fight off the bats, get to the stone, get it to the ferryman so this mummification ritual can take place. Because if they're not, if they don't perform this mummification ritual, they'll pretty much be torn apart on the way there. This is almost like a, uh, you know, ferryman through the dead type situation. So they perform the ritual, they they pretty much become mummies, every single one of them, even the dog anvil. And then they get in the boat, and as they get in the boat, there's all these arms and hands reaching into the boat. And because they are dead, and they can smell like their own breath, and it's like decaying, and they're disgusted by it. They're reaching for them, but they're not freaking out because they're not sensing anything that's alive. If they were alive, they're under the impression that they would go crazy and try and tip the boat almost like zombies when you, you know, have zombie blood on you when you're in The Walking Dead. But anyways, that brings us to Archeron Isle. And they basically get there and this isle's made of bones. And as soon as, as soon as they get there, the kind of the boat shows up and the bones move. They all get out of the boat. As we know, I, I knew there'd be another theme. They're not sneaky. They try and be sneaky. Being sneaky helps in so many situations, but they've got too many beefy boys. Mummification ritual almost immediately drops for them because of the Raven sisters, and they start to attack. Uh, Anvil, the dog, actually is the only one that still has the ritual running for him. So they, their goal is to get to the soul tree, avoid the Raven sisters, or defeat the Raven sisters, if they so dare to accomplish such a thing. And in this case, they absolutely do. So the sisters, they're swooping by, <sighs> yelling, squawking, doing all kinds of crazy things. And the the group is, they're fighting back as well as they can. Stan, it's not the first time, won't be the last time that he throws his ax. He throws his ax multiple times and actually gets deflected. He's now axless. Karathu's trying to jump up and grab him, Dragon's Dogma style. And the most successful has actually been the mage that they paid good money for and gave magic stuff to with his magical abilities. But now these harpies, the, the Raven sisters, they both go to the mage who's trying so hard to stay clean in this adventure. And they both puke on him, all over him. And that's not... That's not great. <laughs> During this time, Sten is able to get his axe and he's actually able to gang up on one of the two sisters with Karathu and actually take her down. And they're starting to realize it, it almost looks like she's like rejuvenating or something. So they go to then attack the other one as Roth is pulling himself back together. Gorm sees this and Gorm is able to realize, oh no, the sister's going to regenerate. And he sees that it's tied to her heart, uh, and he takes it upon himself to cut her heart out, which does stop the process. It ends up being real close, there was a timer, and he got it just in the nick of time, like all good stories, as Karathu and Sten are then working on 
the other Raven sister. She's deflecting and stuff. She does, she is able to pick up Sten and toss him. He kind of goes off of the Isle of Bones and into the, the, I can only assume misty, disgusting water with all the creepy dead hands. And they're starting to grab him. But luckily Anvil, who is still mummified, he's able to save Sten as Karathu, the, the berserk gladiator, is able to continue to finish off the other Raven sister. Gorham yells, the heart, don't forget about the heart. The heart, Osborn. They, they get the other Raven sister's heart out, they grab the enchanted sap, and they move on with their lives. I'm trying to be a lot more succinct with these recaps because I'm realizing it's not really your jam, but I'm already three in. I might as well finish the other two. This has been Sacred with the Sacred Art of Gaming. I hope you're digging the content, even if you're not digging this exact thing, but maybe you are. Maybe you want to see what happens to Sten even after this adventure, and you want to see additional solo adventures with him, assuming he survives, of course. If so, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and never forget to make some time to play, create, and have fun. This has been Sacred. Out.